can an Aussie dad make barn me with a twist? In what decade barn me was invented? And the two different nations that come together to give us this almighty sandwich. Have you ever seen a pork shoulder roasted or smoked with charcoal or natural wood? We're gonna do a smoked pork shoulder and it's not gonna be pulled, but it's gonna be sliced. And this will definitely blow wind up your arnie skirt. Because my baguette making skills is weaker than a wet tissue, we're going to the pros. A good bummy should have super airy guts, crispy and thin crust. Now I'm a big believer in the six P's. Prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. If you're a big fan of prep or mise en place for your fancy buckets, let's do the pickling and the prep of the pork the day before. This journey with Pepper the Pig started before we've even got into the kitchen. Decent money muscle on it. Got a bit of bend in it. The main thing is the fat cap isn't thicker than you after Christmas dinner. Should be nice and soft to the touch. Prostate glove on. Right, frame it off, and then we're gonna see if we need to trim down that fat cap. If you have got a hard AF fat cap, you wanna trim it down to about one and a half to two centimeters, or about three quarters of an inch. Now, the way I like to trim it is just to go along the length. The key thing is here, less is more. Just skim the top off. Because I'm tighter than a fistful of assholes, I wanna recycle this fat off the top. We're gonna to place it into a small container, render it down, and that will become lard, and we can use that for cooking. We're gonna stick with the fat cap. We're just gonna slice about an inch or two and a half centimeters width across, and we're gonna do some diagonal cuts. This is basically just gonna open up that surface area. The heat will get into it, start to render out that fat a little bit, and the seasoning will also punch itself in. Right from there, you wanna check for silver skin. Any fucking dodgy bits hanging off. This one's actually pretty damn good. As you can see, nice, clean underbelly of it. Now, quick tip. Just a tip with Aussie Q barbecue. If you're looking for money muscle, you're doing that pulled pork, you're doing that comp scene, See the wire bone here? Come flip it around, opposite side. There's the money muscle. See those striations of fat just there? Now, do we cook a fat cat up or fat cap down? There's no right way or wrong way, but because I'm gonna be cooking with a bullet smoker, heat coming from under its guts, I'm gonna flip the fat up like that. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna season the opposite side. So we're gonna season the presentation side last. So do the fat cap, flip it over, then doing the other side. Plenty of seasoning options here. I'm using the award-winning Dirt. If you can't get your hands on the Oz Dirt barbecue rub, a mixture of kosher salt, cracked pepper, some garlic powder, onion powder, a little bit of smoked paprika is all you're gonna need. It'll give you a fucking banging result. Not mandatory, but I like to use a binder like Sriracha. It just helps the rub stick about 10 to 15% better. If you don't wanna do it, piss it off. I'm not forcing you to. I haven't got a dead Oz bottle to your head. Nice even coat. Now the seasoning, aim for about 50 centimeters above. It gives you a nice even coat. You should better even see that from where you are. Avoids the hot spots, rub burning, etc. Then of course, pat, tight rub, save that for the bloody bedroom. Then if you're gonna eat all sides, season all sides. Mango sriracha on the opposite side, rubber in, same treatment with the rub. As you can see, this is a sort of coverage you want. You can just sort of see that ruby red meat underneath. If it's a thicker pork butt, you probably wanna go a little bit thicker so you can't see the meat underneath. Because we're either smart or lazy bastards, we're gonna bang this into the fridge with a pickling solution and we'll get crack into the smoking in the morning. See you then. Right, the first step, we can do this a day before. We're gonna pickle some carrot. We can bang in some daikon as well. First of all, quickly remove the fori. From there, we'll work on the pickling solution. Trusty stainless scraper. I'll just give it a quick home. No Lorena Bobbitt references. Now you can do a julienne on the carrot. I like to shave mine personally. I just like the texture and the look of it in the barn me. Use a normal peeler and just press down a little bit harder and that'll increase the thickness of the carrot. And this is the sort of thickness that I'm looking for slightly translucent. Righto, let's rip into the pickling solution. Piece of cake, come over here. So there's a metric shit ton of ways we can do this pickling solution. We're just gonna go 50-50 water, white vinegar, some pickling spice, and about a half a tablespoon of sugar. Bang in about a tablespoon of pickling spice. Just get it to the simmer, and as soon as the sugar and salt's dissolved, rip it off. Should look something like that. Pretty damn simple. Only take about one to two minutes. Carrot skin straight into a mason jar, syllable jar, something like that. Then we're gonna pour that pickly solution straight over the top. Give yourself about one to two centimeters at the top, otherwise it's gonna piss out everywhere when you close up the lid. Now you can bang that into the fridge and we'll see you tomorrow. Battle plug is on. But don't be a lazy prick like me. Make sure you clean out the charcoal before you come back. Now you're gonna have to throw all this crap out. And the reason for that is we wanna get rid of all that charcoal at the bottom because we want maximum airflow, feed the fire and give a nice cleaner burn. All <coughs> right, we're gonna keep it simple stupid. We're gonna make it reappear with some briquettes. As you can see, pretty simple setup. Layer it around in circles, it'll burn from the inside out, just like a fuse. 
natural fire lighters in the middle have some charcoal just hanging over the top that's going to cause the burn then some cherry wood facing lengthways so that will also burn out like a fuse to the perimeter using a whiskey barrel well, as you can see the life of a barbecue day it's fucking dark i almost tripped over myself 74 fucking times with me bloody ugly because it is freezing Let's get this started. <clears throat> Let's arc it up. Now that there's any charcoal lit, we'll just move your first piece of fruit wood just so it's touching and that will start smoking. So today I'm raw dogging it. Got no water, no sand, no nothing. I've just got a 50 centimeter stainless plate on top. It stops it getting from filthy downstairs. Just a tip of course, have the door facing a direction where you can easily access it. So if you need to throw some more charcoal in there to get the heat up, throw some more wood, easy to do. Right, it's been about half an hour or so. We're gonna get a pit temp up to about 140, 150 Celsius because we're gonna cook it more like a roast. Bang him straight into the guts. Now, it's at this point, you're gonna have a metric shit ton of time. So this is a perfect opportunity to make sides and even pickle the veg if you're too lazy to do it the night before. So don't think of it, oh, this is a eight to 10 hour cook. Yes, you gotta have some hands on during the eight to 10 hours, but by Christ, you can use this time to do fucking heaps of crap around the house. Maybe even mow the back lawn that your missus has been smashing you for for the last two weeks. Harness you in a Steve vehicle. And if you're over the age of 30, you're getting stuck into your lawnmower work. <coughs> oh, as long as you haven't done your fucking back in. Or watch a Tesla get torn apart on YouTube. Please hang up. You like sewer water. to you, anyone? This is after about six hours, look at that. It should be redder than an Irishman on an Aussie beach. Right, so the internal temp is about 78 Celsius or 172 Fahrenheit. Feel free to bang this into the oven and we can finish that in there. That's a great color. You've got a nice bit of bark on the top, but we're gonna finish this off in the oven. It's got all the flavor it needs from the charcoal. Like I said, you can do this from start to finish in the oven. Simple as that. Just remember, we're gonna rip it off before it gets to pulled pork texture. Instead of going through like warm apple pie or warm butter, you wanna be able to push it through quite easily, but have a little bit of tightness on. Let's crack on with the Viet butter. First step, must be room temperature, three egg yolks and half of an egg white. In. Two teaspoons of fish sauce. Then a sugar. Half to one teaspoon of garlic, depending if you're a vampire or not. We'll hit this with immersion blend. Then we'll go to the neutral oil. Slowly pull down, then bring it up. Once it's fully incorporated, drizzle in your oil. Right, for the cucumber, we're gonna go about a hand length, which will be about the size of your Vietnamese baguette. A half. Want it to look something like this. Now, if you don't like coriander, harden the hell up. Just take the roots off, loosely rip them up, and they're gonna go straight into the bun. Our Queenslanders use sweet chili sauce, but we're just gonna use a normal red chili. Just gonna split that in half. If you wanna reduce the heat, just pull the pith out. A wet paper towel, throw that on top, then you can put it on the bed. No need to bang it into the fridge. As you can see, not as loose as normal pulled pork, but still almost no resistance. Just a little bit of tightness, just like a well-cooked roast lamb shoulder. I reckon with a bit of coaxing, we should be able to get this. Moan out, yup. Right, all right, let's slice it open. I uh, cooked it a little bit too much. It's still very, very tender, not quite pulled pork, but let's just go a serrated knife because we've got the nice bark on the top. Cop a load of this. Slice open our baguette. Go the Maggi Original. A Maggi Original on one side. Generous lashing of pate straight over the top. Our Viet butter. Got pickled carrot, got the cucumber, that beautiful pork. Grab some coriander and some chili to finish it off. Give this red hot shot. Oh yeah. Using that Boston butt is an absolute game changer. It's so tender. You can taste that caramelization from that charcoal, the smoke, absolute winner. Make sure you bang it in.